we have to talk about a thing you've kind of mentioned already a bunch of times, but doing computation through chemistry, chemical-based computation. I've seen you in, refer to it as in a, in a sexy title of Kemp mutation. Computation. So, what is computation? What is chemically uh, chemical based computation? Okay, so computation is a a name I gave to the process of um, building a state machine to make any molecule physically in the lab. And so, as a chemist, chemists make molecules by hand, and um, and they're quite hard. The chemists have a lot of tacit knowledge, a lot of ambiguity. It's not possible to go uniformly to the literature and read a recipe to make a molecule and then go and make it in the lab every time. Some recipes are better than others, but they all assume some knowledge. <laughs> and it's not universal what that is. Like, so it's uh, carried from from human to human. Yeah. Some of that implicit knowledge. Yeah. And you're saying, can we remove the human from the picture? Can we, like, uh, program? Okay. Well, by the way, what is a state machine? <laughs> So a state machine is a, I suppose, a, a, a object, either abstract or mechanical, where you can do, you can um, do a unit operation on it and flick it from one state to another. So a turnstile would be a good example of a state machine. A, so there's some kinds of states and some kind of transitions yeah. between states, so, and it's um, very formal in nature in terms of have, like it's precise how yes, you do those transitions. Yes, you can transitions. mathematically precisely describe a state machine. So, I mean, a, you know, a very simple Boolean um, gates are a very good way of building kind of logic-based state machines. Um, obviously, a Turing machine, the concept of a Turing machine where you have a tape and a read head and a series of rules in a table, and you would basically look at what's on the tape. And if you're shifting the tape from left to right, and if you see a zero or one, you look in your lookup table and say, right, I've seen a zero and a one. Um, I then do, um, I then respond to that. So in the turnstile would be, is there a human being pushing the turnstile in direction clockwise? If yes, I will open, let them go. If it's anti-clockwise, no. So yeah, so a state machine has some labels and a transition, transition diagram. So you're looking to come up with a chemical computer to form state machines? to to create molecules or yeah so mo it, yeah, which uh it, what's the chicken and the egg so computation is not a chemical computer because we talked a few moments about right, actually doing computations with chemicals yeah what i'm now saying is i want to use state machines to transform chemicals and so so, so build chemicals programmatically yeah i mean i get in trouble saying this i i said to my my group oh i shouldn't say it because it's, it's but i said look we should make the crack bot is in the crack robot <laughs> The robot that makes the crack. crackbot. The uh, robot. Oh, the ro oh <laughs> crackbot. The robot that makes crack. But maybe we should scrub this from. Uh, but <laughs> no, or 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 uh, well, uh, so, so maybe you can educate me on uh, Breaking Bad with like meth, yeah. right? Yeah. So in Breaking Bad, so you want to make you want to make um, basically some kind of mix of Ex Machina and Breaking Bad. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. For the system. record, I don't. But I no, said you don't. I said that's what I'm going to do. It once you release the papers. <laughs> uh, but I, I shave my head, <laughs> and I'm going to uh, uh, live a life of crime. Anyway, I'm sorry. No, uh, no. Um, so, so yeah. Let's get back to it. so. It, it, indeed, it is about making drugs, but importantly, making important drugs. Um, so all let's, drugs matter. Yeah, but let's go. Let's go back. So, the basic thesis is chemistry is very analog there is no state machine um and i wandered into the the through the paper walls in the in the japanese house a few years ago and said okay hey organic chemist why are you why are you doing this analog and they said well chemistry is really hard you ha you can't automate it it's impossible mm -hmm. i said but is it impossible I said, yeah and they said and they said you know i got the impression they're saying it's magic mm -hmm. and so when people tell me things are magic it's like, no, no, they can't be magic, right? So let's break this down. And so what I did is um, I went to my, my group one day about, about eight years ago and said, hey, guys, I've written this new programming language for you. Um, and so everything is clear. And, you know, you have to, you're not allowed to just wander around the lab willy-nilly. You have to pick up things in order, go to the balance at the right time and all this stuff. And they looked at me as if I was insane and basically kicked me out of the lab and said, no, don't do that. We're not doing that. Yeah. 
And I said, okay. So I went back the next day and said, I'm going to find some money so we can make cool robots to do chemical reactions. And everyone went, that's cool. Yeah. And so in that process... <laughs> The first you try to convert the humans to become robots, and, and next you you agree you might as well just create the robots. Yes, but so in that in, in that the formalization process. Yeah. So what I did is I said, look, a react chemical to make a molecule, you need to do four things abstractly. I want to make a chemical Turing machine because a Turing machine. You think about this. Imagine a Turing machine. A Turing machine is the ultimate um, abstraction of of a computation because it's been shown by Turing and others that basically a universal Turing machine should be able to do all computations that you can imagine. It's like, wow, why don't I think of a Turing machine for chemistry? Let's think of a magic robot that can make any molecule. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that for a second. Okay, great. How do we then implement it? And I think, it's right. so what is the abstraction? So to, do a re a, to make any molecule, you have to do a reaction. So you have to put reagents together, do a reaction in a flask typically then you're after the reaction you have to stop the reactions so you do what's called a workup so whatever cool it down add some liquid to it extract so then after you do the workup you separate so you then remove the molecules separate them all out and then the final step is purification so reaction at uh, workup separate purify so this is basically a lot my exactly like a um a turing machine where you have your tape you have your tape head you have some rules and then you run it so i thought cool I went to all the chemists and said, look, chemistry isn't that hard. Reaction, workup, separation, purification. Do that in cycles forever for any molecule, all the chemistry. Done. And they said, um, chemistry is that hard. I said, but, but just in principle. And, they, and, and I got a few very enlightened people to say, yeah, okay, in principle, but it ain't going to work. And this was in about 2013, 2014. And I... I found myself going to an architecture conference almost by accident. It's like, why am I at this random conference on architecture? And that was because I published a paper on inorganic architecture. And they said, come to an architecture conference. But the inorganic architecture is about nano architecture. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. And I went, okay. And then I found these guys at the conference 3D printing ping pong balls and shapes. And this is through nice. it. 3D printing was cool. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Why are you 3D printing ping pong balls? And I gave them a lo whole load of abuse like I normally yeah. do when I first meet people, how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, you guys are geniuses. Yeah. And so I got, I got from, they were a bit confused because I was calling them idiots and then calling them geniuses. It's like, yeah. will you come to my lab and we're going to build a robot to do chemistry with a 3D printer? And I said, oh, that's cool. All right. So I had them come to the lab and we started to 3D print test tubes. So you imagine, yeah. you know, 3D print a bottle and then, and then, in the, and then use the same gantry to basically rather than to squirt out m a plastic out of a nozzle have a little syringe and jet chemicals in cool. so we had the 3d printer that could simultaneously print the test tube and then put chemicals into the test tube and then well so it's really end to end yeah i was like that'll be because cool, they've got g code to do it all i was like yeah that's cool so i got my group doing this and i developed it a bit and i realized that we could take those unit operations and we built a whole bunch of pumps and valves and I realized that I could basically take the literature and I made the first version of the computer in 2016, 17. I, I made some architectural decisions. So I designed the pumps and valves in my group. I did all the electronics in my group. They were brilliant. I, I, I cannot pay tribute to my group enough in doing this. They were just brilliant. And there were some poor souls there that said, Lee, why are you making us design electronics? I'm like, well, because I don't understand it. And they're like, so you're making us design stuff because you don't understand. It's like, yeah. It's like, but can we not just buy some? I said, well, we can, but then I don't understand how to, you know, what bus they're going to use and the serial ports and all this stuff. I just wanted, and I made, I came up with a decision to design a bunch of pumps and valves. Mm -hmm. I use power of the Ethernet. So they've got one cable for power and data. Plug them all in. Plug them all into a router. And, um, and then I made the state machine. Mm. And there was a couple of cool things I did. Oh, they did actually. Um, we got the the abstraction, so reaction, work, uh, work up, separation, um, I, I purification, and then I made the decision to do it in batch. Now it's in batch. All chemistry had been digitized before, apparently. Everyone said it's been done, but everyone's been doing it in flow, and flow is continuous, and there are infinities everywhere, and you have to just. And I realized that I could actually make a state machine where I basically put stuff in. The reactor, turn it from one state to another state, mm -hmm. stop it, and just read it out. And okay, and I was kind of 
bitching at electrical engineers saying you have it easy you don't have to clean out the electrons you know electrons don't leave a big mess they leave some em waste but in my state machine i built in cleaning so it's like we do an operation then it cleans the backbone then can do it again so there's no fascinating so what we managed to do over a couple of years is is develop the hardware develop the state machine and we encoded three molecules. We did three, the first three, we did nitol, a sleeping drug, rufinamide, anesthesia, and Viagra. Mm. You know, and I, I could make jokes on the paper. It's a hard problem, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very good. <laughs> and, then, and then in the next one, what we did said, okay, my poor organic chemist said, look, Lee, we've, we've worked with you this long. We've made a robot that looks like it's going to take our jobs away and, and, not just take our jobs away, the, what we love in the lab, but now we have to become programmers. But we're not even good programmers. We just have to spend ages writing lines of code that are boring, mm. and it's not as elegant. I went, you're right. So then, but I knew, because I had this abstraction, and I knew that there was language, I could suddenly develop a state machine that would interpret the language, which was lossy and ambiguous, and populate my abstraction. So I built a chemical programming language that is... It's actually going to be recursively enumerable. It's going to be a Turing complete language, actually, which is kind of cool, which means it's formally verifiable. So where we are now is we can now read the literature using a bit of natural language processing. It's not the best. There are many other groups that have done a better job. But we can use that language reading to populate the state machine and basically add, subtract. There's a, we've got about a number of primitives that we, that, that, you know, basically program loops that we dovetail together and we can make any molecule with it okay so that's that's a kind of program synthesis so you start at like literally you're talking about like a paper like a scientific paper that's being read yeah so natural language processing extracting some kind of uh details about chemical reactions and uh, the, the, the chemical mo molecules and composites involved and then that's th that uh in, in gpt terms serves as a prompt for the program synthesis that's kind of trivial right now there you have a bunch of different like for loops and so on mm -hmm. that creates a program in this chemical language that can then be interpreted by the chemical computer uh, the computer yeah computer uh, that's computer the word. <laughs> yeah uh, everything sounds better in your uh, british accent by the way it's, <laughs> I, I love it so the in, into the computer and that's able to then basically be a 3D printer for these for molecules. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a 3D printer. I would call it a universal chemical reaction system because 3D right. printing gives the wrong impression. But yeah, and, and it purifies. And the nice thing is that that code now, that we call it chem, the, the KIDL code, is, is really interesting because now, so computation, what is computation? Computation is um, what computing is to mathematics, I think. Computation is the process of taking chemical code and some input reagents and making the same molecule, making the molecule reproducibly every time without fail. What is computation? It's the process of taking a pro using a program to take some input conditions and give you an output, same every time, mm -hmm. right? Well, reliably. So the the problem is now. Maybe you can push back and correct me on this. So I know biology is messy. My question is how messy is chemistry? So the if we use the analogy of a computer, it's easier to make computation in a computer very precise, that it's repeatable, it makes errors almost never. If it, it does the exact same way over and over and over and over. What about chemistry? Is there messiness in the whole thing? Is, can that be somehow leveraged? Can that be controlled? Can it be that removed? Do we want to remove it from the system? Oh, yes and no, right? This, is there messiness? There, there is messiness because chemistry is like you're, 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 you're doing reactions on, on billions of molecules and they don't always work, but you've got purification there. And so what we've found is at the beginning, everyone said it can't work. It's going to be too messy. It will just fail. And I said, but you managed to get chemistry to work in the lab. Are you magic? Are you doing something? Yeah. So I would say, now go back to the first ever computer or the ENIAC. Five million soldered joints, four hundred thousand uh, valves that are exploding all the time. Was that? Would you have gone? Okay, that's messy. Mm -hmm. So we've got the and and have we got the equivalent of the ENIAC in my lab? We've got fifteen computers in the lab now, and they are they unreliable? Yeah, they fall apart here and there. But are they getting better really quickly? Yeah, 
Are they now able to reliably make more? Are we at the point in the lab where there are some molecules we would rather make on the computer um, than have a human being make? Yeah, we've just done, we've just made a, um, an anti-influenza molecule and some antivirals, um, six steps on the computer that would take a human being about one week to make Arbidol um, of continuous labor. And all they do now is load up the reagents, press go button, and just go away and drink coffee. Wow. So this, I mean, and this is, uh, you're saying this computer is just the early days. And so like yeah. some of the criticism just have to do with the early days. And yes, I, I would say that something like this is uh, quite impossible. Uh, you know, so the, the fact that you're doing this is incredible. Not not impossible, of course, but extremely difficult. It it did seem really difficult, and I do keep pinching myself when I go in the lab. I was like, "Is it working?" Like, "Yep." And it and it's not. You know, it does clog. It does stop. You got to clean. This is great. It's, you know, but it's um it's getting more reliable because I made some. We just made design decisions and said we are not going to abandon the abstraction. Think about it. If the if you the von Neumann implementation was abandoned. I mean, think about what we do to semiconductors to really constrain them mm -hmm. to um, what we do to silicon in a fab lab. We take computation for granted. The silicon is not in its natural state. We are doping the hell out of it. It's incredible what they're able yeah. to accomplish and achieve that reliability at the scale they do. Like you said, that's after Moore's Law, what we have now yeah. and so just, where we, you know, uh, how it started, you know, so now we're here. We now. started at the bottom, now we're here. We have only have 20 million molecules, well, say 20 million molecules in one database, maybe a few hundred million in all the pharmaceutical companies. Um, and those few hundred million molecules are, re are responsible for all the drugs that we've had in humanity, except, you know, biologics for the last 50 years. Now imagine what happens when a drug goes out of print, goes out of print, because there's only a finite number of manufacturing facilities in the world that make these drugs. It's out of print. Yeah. The computer. This is the printing press the but for chemistry. Yeah. And, and not only that, we can protect the KIDL so we can stop bad actors doing it. We can encrypt them and we can give people like Yeah, that's the name of, sorry to interrupt, is the name of the programming yeah. language? The KIDL is the name of the programming language and the pro code we give the chemicals. So Chi, as in, you know, just for, it's like a, it's actually like an XML format, but I've now taken it from script to a, to a fully expressible programming language so we can do dynamics and there's four loops in there and conditional statements right but the structure it started out as a um like a like an xml yeah. type of thing yeah 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 and now we also the chemist doesn't need to program in kydl they can just go to the software and type in add a to b reflux do what they would normally do and it just converts it to kydl and they have a linter to check it and error so corrects. how do you um you know not with ascii but because it's a greek letter how, how do you go with um, how do you spell it just using the, the English alphabet? We just I mean, XDL, XDL, but all we use, we put in Kai. Okay. And it was named by one of my students and I, and one of my postdocs many years ago, and I quite liked it. It's like, it's, a cool uh, it's important, I think, when the team are contributing to such big ideas, because it's their ideas as well. It's, I try not to just rename, I didn't call it Cronin or anything that, because they keep saying, you know, is a, um, is it the, the chemistry when they're putting stuff in the computer? One of my students said, we are asking now, is it Cronin complete? And I was like, what does that mean? I said, well, can we make it on the damn machine? <laughs> and I was like, oh, is, like it. It, is that a compliment or a, or a pejorative? And they're like, well, it might be both.